wisdom, righteousness, and power, holiness forevermore. My salvation is assured. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power, holiness forevermore. My salvation is assured. He is all I need. He is all I need. He is all I need. My salvation is assured. He is all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness forevermore. My salvation is assured. He is all I need. He is all I need. He is all I need. My salvation is assured. He is all I need. God bless you, Tamika. God bless you, Mother Holman. God bless you, Brother Maurice. God bless you, Sister Francine. God bless you, Mother Dixon. God bless you, Sister Stokes. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for you. God bless you, Missionary Janice. God bless you, Sister Mamie. God bless you. God bless you, Stikes. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Ford. God bless you, Brandy. God bless you, Pastor Alday. God bless you, Lady Austin. God bless you, Sister Walker. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Mrs. Green. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Sister Lady Holden. God bless you. God bless you, Mother Howard. Praise God for you today. God bless you, Evangelist Pettiford. God bless you, Sister Hedrick. God bless you, Candace. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Sister White, God bless you, Sister Chambers. Well, praise the Lord, and God bless you, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And once again, it is a pleasure and an honor to be able to share a few moments with you in biblical meditation and in prayer. The Lord remains faithful to us. We remain ever grateful to him for everything. The Lord is so, so good. And I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful to the Lord for his blessings, his mercy, his love, his love, his kindness, all that he is to us. I am grateful and thankful that all of you have taken time to rise up early this morning and join me in prayer. If you have a prayer request, please place it in the chat. We are taking those requests before the Lord each day and trusting God for his grace and his mercy in our lives. And um, if it's of a more private nature, please feel free to inbox me um, simply to Reginald Davis. There's no title, it's just Reginald Davis. Um, and we will carry all of our requests before the Lord. So many people um, continue to have so many needs. And so more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we want to continue to carry those to God because we trust God for what we know he, he is able to do. I want to direct your thinking this morning to the third chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we're going to, re we're going to be reading verses 1 through six verses one through six the bible says do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation from you we, ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of christ Ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God, Lord, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also have made us to be able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. 
And I want to talk to you for a few moments today um, from the thought, God sufficient, God sufficient, God sufficient. You know, one of the constants in this book, in this letter, is Paul's continued um, assertion of his apostleship. There were so many that seemed to thrive off of the notion that Paul was somehow an illegitimate apostle, that he was somehow not what he should have been or not where he should have been, not doing what he should have done. And so that's, that's why he opens verse um, or chapter three with this thing about do we need letters? Because it was common in these times that if you were a leader, if you were a traveling um, minister, that you would carry with you letters of commendation, letters from whoever you was your um, base or your um, your area of strength or expertise, and they would give you a letter of endorsement. And that endorsement would explain who you were and what your gifts were and what your abilities were. And, and that was how people recognized you. Now, it seemed ridiculous that they would want some kind of letter from um, Paul because Paul was the founder of the church. Most of the people that were there, he had preached to them. He had led them to Christ. He was their primary teacher in the early days of their discipleship. And yet, because there were those who were trying to undermine Paul, he said, do I need to bring a letter? And he, his response simply was that you are my letter because you represent the fruit of my labor. You were one to Christ. You were strengthened. You're edified. You're blessed now because of what the Lord allowed me to do. And so he goes on to say that we are supposed to be living epistles. Living epistles, living epistles, meaning that our lives, our behavior, our um, ministry is a reflection on Jesus Christ. And people see us and know that God is real. They see us and know about God's ability. They see us and know about God's grace. They see the evidence of our transformed lives so that they can have faith in God that he is able to transform their lives. So we become those living epistles, read of men. People look and read our lives and they look and, and, and they glorify God. As Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your father, which is in heaven. Your, the fruit of your life should bear, your life rather should bear fruit to manifest and bear witness of the saving grace, of the power, of the anointing, of the ability that is in God. And so there's no need for a letter. Just live the life. Just live the life. Live the life before them. Walk before them. Serve them. And make sure that people can see Christ in you. Verse 4 says, do we trust, our, do we trust ourselves? And our trust rests with Christ. Our confidence, our ability, all stands in light of Christ. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. And there are three possible ways to look at your life, your ministry, the work of God, what God is doing in your life. And two of them are mistakes. The first one is to perceive yourself as self-sufficient. And I know we use that word to talk about people who have the ability to earn a living and take care of themselves and to, 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 or to do for themselves physically or to handle their own affairs. But the notion of self-sufficiency um, in this context is the notion that I can do what I do without God. I don't need God. I don't need other people. I don't need anything. I can just do what I do. And, and in so many cases, that self-sufficiency is ill-founded because in reality, what can we do without God? What are we able to accomplish without him? What are we able to um, actually succeed at without the help and hand of God? If you 
would be honest with yourself, if you would be honest with those that you love and those that you care about, you if, and, and just honest with people, you would have to say that without the Lord, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said. Without me, you can do nothing, which means that my blessing, my giftedness, my whatever is a function of the fact that I am connected with God. If I was not connected with God, saints, my life would be a mess. If my life was not connected with God, I wouldn't have anything. So many things that should have happened to me didn't happen to me because God was covering me. Hallelujah. So I can never walk around in an arrogant mindset. I, I, I don't understand pride. I don't understand it because I know everybody has some and some have too much, but I don't understand pride because how can you be proud about what you know you did not do? How can you be proud of what you know that you did not make happen? If God had not been there, if God had not shown himself, if God had not revealed himself, if God had not had mercy on me, oh my God, what would I have been? How could I have lived? What could I have accomplished without God? He is the source of everything that is good in my life. He is the source of of everything that is functional in my life. And if he's not operating, guess what? Nothing good is happening for me. Oh my God, I don't know how other people feel about it. And that might explain why we're so stingy with our praise because we honestly think that we did this. We honestly think that we accomplished that. We honestly think that we're the ones that got to the degree alone or bought the house or got the marriage or raised the children or function on the job. All of this is a function of God working through us. In him we live. Oh God, hallelujah. In him we move. In him we have our being. The source of my strength, the source of my intellect, the source of of everything about me that is worthy is God. And so that, that first element is thinking yourself self-sufficient. My friend, you are not self-sufficient. I'm not self-sufficient. The second fallacy is to begin to think that you are insufficient. And I want to deal with that for a moment. Because in so many cases, the enemy would want us think that we are insufficient. How many of us withdraw from challenges? How many of us back away from obstacles? How many of us wallow in discouragement? Because somehow life and people and the, and the enemy has convinced us that we are insufficient. How many of us hear daily from ourselves or from other people, you can't do that. You can't accomplish that. That's too much for you. That's beyond your ability. That's beyond your reasoning. That's beyond your resources. We're told almost constantly what we cannot do and what we cannot accomplish. And so some of us wallow in a mindset of insufficiency, always thinking the worst of ourselves, always thinking the worst of situations, always thinking the worst of ministry, always thinking the worst of whatever, because someone has convinced us that we are somehow insufficient, incapable. That's what happened to Israel when they were getting ready to face the promised land. And because they saw the walled cities and because they saw the giants and because they saw the, 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 the massive amounts of soldiers, they said, we cannot overtake this land. We cannot overtake this. And the only two in the group, Joshua and Caleb, stood up and said, let us go up at once and possess the land because we are well able. If the Lord delight in us. We are well able to possess the land. In other words, if God is with us, there is no obstacle that we cannot face. If God is with us, there is no, there is nothing that can limit us if God is with us. If God is with us. Which brings me to our third and the appropriate thinking. Verse four, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. My brother, my sister, I came to remind you this morning that we are God sufficient. We are God sufficient. 
We are God sufficient. What does that mean, Bishop? It means that as long as God is with us, nothing is impossible. Oh, God, as long as God is with us, as long as he is covering us, as long as he is connected with us, there are no limitations. We have everything we need when we have Christ. Why? Because he is everything. He is the bread. He's the water. He's the strength. He's the health. He's the life. He's the ability. He's the intellect. Oh God, he's the power. Oh God, he's the authority. He's all of these things. And if all of these things are attached to us, those things become a part of us. That's why you just can't have a casual relationship with God. You have to be connected with God because if indeed you are connected, connected with God, you gain everything that's a part of God. The Bible says that we are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, meaning that everything that is in God, oh God, has been placed in us through the Holy Spirit. And so all of these abilities, all of this insight, all of this knowledge becomes a part of us because we're connected with God. Apart from him, nothing. Apart from him, no ability. Apart from him, no resources, but attached to him, everything. Oh God, when I'm attached to him, I have access to everything. When I'm attached to him, I have access to his knowledge, to his wisdom, to his insight, to his power. I have access to everything that God provides by my connection with him. So my life is transformed because I have become what? God sufficient. Oh God, my life is transformed. My life is strengthened. My life is empowered. My life, oh God, is blessed because I, I have become God sufficient. In me, nothing. Without him, nothing. But when I'm attached and connected with him, everything is at my disposal based upon my faith because I have become God sufficient. And God give each of us the faith, oh God, and the humility, humility first, to say to the Lord, Lord, I can't do this without you. Lord, I can't live this without you. Lord, I can't survive this without you. But Lord, if you attach yourself to me, Lord, if you give me the power of your spirit, oh God, that's why he went on to say that we're ministers and we're not ministers of just the letter alone is not the written text. And, and Paul was speaking about the law is not the law that's making this happen. It's the spirit that's making this happen. Why? Because the letter kills. All the law does is show you your, 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 your sin. All the law does is show you your failings. All the law does is show you your insufficiency, but the spirit gives you life. Oh God, the purpose of the law was to bring you to the reckon, to, to the knowledge that without Christ, you're nothing. But when you come to that knowledge and when you humble yourself and when you repent of your sins, then God gives you the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God gives you life. And with that life comes the knowledge of God, the authority of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the insight of God the intuitive nature of God, the mind of Christ, as it were. And so when you walk in the spirit, you gain that connection and you become God sufficient. Oh God, I just came to encourage somebody this morning to live in the power and the presence of God, because that's going to give you what you need to reconcile relationships to gain insight into your health, to gain insight into your emotional well-being, to gain insight into how you handle your finances, how you make life decisions, how you manage the challenges of life. Because yes, life does not stop being challenging just because you got saved. But because I'm saved and because I'm walking with God, saints, I am God sufficient. Oh God, that's why he said you'll be the head and not the tail. Not because of me, but because of God. I'm God sufficient. I'm going to live in the power. I'm going to live in the presence. I'm going to live in the knowledge of God. 
And yes, whatever challenges life brings me, I will overcome them because I am God sufficient. Hallelujah. And with that knowledge and that faith, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, before we say anything this morning, we say thank you. Thank you for life and thank you for health and thank you for strength. Thank you, God, for every blessing you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, God, for your continued mercy. And thank you, oh God, for this word today that has reminded us that our sufficiency does not come from us. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we are nothing. Lord, the, the vitality and the worthiness of our lives comes from our attachment to you. And Lord, we fully acknowledge this morning that outside of you, God, there's no strength, there's no ability, there's no grace, there's no power, there's no intellect, there's nothing outside of you, God. But Lord, with you, there is everything, everything that we need, everything that we desire, everything that we are attached to. My gosh, it all comes from you. And we say thank you today, oh God, from the sufficiency that only comes from you from the glory, from the power, from the understanding, from the life ashataye, that only comes from you. Thank you, my shataye. Oh God, thank you, my God. Thank you, my God, because you have made us sufficient in you. Lord, we know we can do nothing without you. Lord, we know we cannot survive without you. Lord, we know we cannot make it. We cannot live without you. But Lord, we now understand and we are reminded today that in you, oh God, is life and peace peace and strength and all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God, in you is power. In you is authority. In you, oh God, is wisdom. In you is righteousness. In you, God, is peace. And because we're attached to you, all of those things, my God, belong to us. Lord, I pray that each of us that are, oh God, in tune today, each of us that are on this call today would see ourselves, my God, as being sufficient in you. Not of ourselves, not in ourselves, not by ourselves ourselves, but God totally committed, oh Shatanaye, oh God, to the walk that we have with you. God, we're praying today. God, for every prayer request that has come through, oh God, on the line right now. We're praying, oh God, for every believer that has joined themselves early this morning or will join themselves throughout today to be a part of this prayer. And God, we're praying right now that you would meet every need, every request, oh God, every petition that has gone before you, that you would look upon each of us, Lord, and whatever that we're lacking, my God, that you would provide it. Lord, we know there's no lack in you. We know there's no emptiness in you. We know there's no void in you that you fill all space, that you make all provision, that you open every door. And so, God, we thank you right now. We thank you right now for the provision. We thank you right now for the sufficiency. We thank you right now, oh God, for the adequacy. Oh God, and even, Lord, the excellence that we find in our connection with you. And God, as we come to pray today, we pray for the many needs, oh God, every name that was mentioned, oh God, on the line. Every name that was sent, oh God, through messenger. Every name, oh God, that appears. And even those names that don't appear, but they're in our hearts. They're in our minds. They're in our spirits today. And we're praying right now. God, we're praying for the sick today. Lord, remember Catherine Nelson. My God, remember Pastor Finney, Lord. Remember Mother Clark. Oh God, remember Mother Jenkins today, God. Remember Mother Holman, Mother Tanaj, Mother Foster. Oh God, Mother Carter today. Remember Mother Jenkins right now. Lord, continue to touch and heal her body. God, we look, oh God, we ask you to pray for Erica today. God, we're praying for Tiffany, Lord. We're praying, oh God, for Lady Carter today. God, we're praying for Elder Brandon Carr. God, because we know you're a healer. God, touch his body now. We're praying for Pastor Jackson. Oh God, we're praying for the Dixon family today. Oh God, remember the sick right now, whether they're in the cancer ward or the COVID ward or I see you, God, whether they're at home, whether they're in the nursing home. Lord, if they're sick, go where they are right now. Oh God, remember Samson and Sesame. Remember my God, Maurice today. Oh, Shatanolobosa. Remember my God, Elder Moya right now. God, we want you to touch these bodies, God, because we know that you are a healer. Oh, 
Lord God, you're the bomb in Gilead. Lord, by your very stripes, my God, we are healed. And so, Lord, we're praying for turnarounds. We're praying for recovery. We're praying for healing to be unleashed. Oh, God, thank you for the testimonies that we've heard. Oh, God, from all over the nation of healing and deliverance. Thank you, God. But, Lord, these souls need a touch today. These souls need a turnaround today. These souls need strength today. Lord God, release your healing virtue right now. Lord, remember Renee today, my God. Remember every soul that said, pray for me. Remember right now because we know that you can and we know that you will. God, we're praying today for bereaved families. God, look on the family of Deacon John Royster today. Oh God, look on the McCoy family, God. Look on the Allen family, the Bryant family, the Taylor family, the Washington Fields family, the Sneed family. Oh God, the White family, God. Look on the Jimenez family, the Solomon family. Look on, oh God, oh God, Hashataye, the Lloyd family, the McLean Melvin family, the Vance Pryor family, every family, oh God, that is battling grief today. Every individual, God, remember the Stanley family, God. Oh God, because we know that you are a healer. Lord, stretch out your mighty hand. Your arm is not too short that it cannot save. My God, your ear is open, oh God, to our cry. And we thank you today, oh God, right now. Oh God, reach out to these families that are grieving, Lord, and touch them now. Oh God, send your hand of love upon them. Send the peace of God that passeth all understanding. My God, be the God of comfort for them now. As they grieve, as they cry, as they mourn, God, you strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Oh God, remember the entire body of Christ. Every believer right now, every apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, or teacher, every bishop, elder, missionary, mother, minister, deacon, every young person, every psalmist, every singer, every disciple, my God, your church sometimes suffers from a malaise. Your church sometimes suffers, oh God, from low self-esteem. Your church sometimes suffers from feelings of inadequacy. But Lord, I want you to send your power to the church in such a way that your church is reminded, oh God, that we are empowered by you, that our anointing makes the difference, that our power makes the difference, that the word you've placed in our mouths makes the difference, and that we would go forth and do what you have called us to do, that there might be miracle signs and wonders wrought in the church and in the earth. My God, I'm praying right now that you would give us that confidence, not in ourselves, but that confidence in the spirit that you have placed within us, that we can say boldly that we can do all things, oh God, through you, because you strengthen us. God, I'm praying right now for those who are discouraged and those who are bewildered. I'm praying, my God, for every soul, oh God, that's battling anything today. My God, stretch out your hand, oh God, to deliver today. Stretch out your hand to save, to heal. Oh God, stretch out your hand to empower and let us walk in the anointing. God, I pray today for first responders. Lord, I'm praying, my shataye, oh God, for doctors and nurses and orderlies and EMT drivers. Oh God, I'm praying today for dietitians, technicians, CNAs, God, everyone that works, oh God, with the sick. God, that you would touch, oh God, and cover them. I'm praying, my God, for those who work in nursing homes, those who work in factories, those, oh hallelujah, who work, oh God, in, in stores, those who work in banks, in public places, God, that you would cover and protect them. God, I'm praying for teachers and children, whether they're working from home or whether they're working, oh God, in the building. God, cover them now. I'm praying, oh God, for widows and widowers. God, I'm praying, my God, for the homeless. I'm praying for those that are worried about their bills and worried about their needs. God, that you would stretch out your hand to provide. And as you touch each of us, Lord, to do something for somebody, Lord, empower us to make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for the nation today. Oh, God, such a spirit of deception is in the land. Such a spirit of self-service is in the land. Such a spirit of evil and hatred and injustice is in the land. But Lord, I want you to put an end. Oh, God, to the corruption, my God. Put an end, my God, to the lies and the deceit. Lord, step in because we know that you're God and the nation and the people belong to you. My God, help us right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, bring peace that passeth all understanding. Oh God, strengthen us now. Let us walk in confidence, Lord, not in pride, not in arrogance, but in the confidence that if you're with us, Lord, we can do all things. We can overcome all things. We can succeed in all things, God. Give us that grace to walk in that knowledge today and 
make us what we would be, God. Help us to grow in your will. Help us to serve you and honor you today. Oh, God, bless us, Lord, to know that we are sufficient in you. And, Lord, because of you, Lord, nothing is impossible for us. Oh, God, help us today. And as you bless us, God, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody give the Lord a praise. Everybody give the Lord a praise. Everybody bless him. Everybody bless him. Hallelujah. Oh, God, Shataye, everybody bless him. Bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Bless the wonderful name of our God. Bless the wonderful, wonderful name. Oh, my God of our God. He is a worthy God, saints. He is a worthy God. He is a worthy God. He remains our sovereign. He remains our king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 This is my declaration today. I am God sufficient. I am God sufficient. I live in the power and the presence of God. Hallelujah. I am God sufficient, saints. I am God sufficient. I live in the power and the presence of God of God. Hallelujah. Got trials, got tribulations, got tests, got struggles, but I am God sufficient. Hallelujah. I live in the power and the presence of God. Thank God for being God sufficient this morning. Thank God for the knowledge that God is keeping us. God is protecting us. God is providing for us. God is ministering to us. God is giving us knowledge and wisdom and understanding to traverse the challenges of life. Yes, God, I am God sufficient, saints. Hallelujah. I am God sufficient. Thanking God for that knowledge today that I am God sufficient. Hallelujah. I'm not insufficient and I'm not self-sufficient. I am God sufficient today. And because of God, because of his love, because of his mercy, because of his grace, oh God, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bless God today. I am indeed, hallelujah, I am indeed God sufficient. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of today's prayer. As always, we are blessed whenever we come together in prayer. And you are welcome to share this with somebody. This will be available on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page. It, we also have our podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And all of these mediums are available for your encouragement and for you to share with somebody. Share with somebody that needs a word. Share with somebody that needs to be encouraged. Remind them, hallelujah, and please share with them in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. You can listen to our radio broadcast that airs every day, Monday through Friday at 1130 a.m. at GregoryGospel.com. Hallelujah. You can join that radio broadcast and the word of God will bless you. And once again, share it with somebody so that someone can hear and, and be encouraged and uplifted by the word of God. Thank you for every person who has sown a gift of any size. We appreciate it so very much. The ministry appreciates it, and we love you, and we thank God for you. If you want to, you can sow into Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. If you want to give electronically, you can give either at our website, which is RefugeTempleNC.com, Refuge Temple. Um, www.refugetemple.com is in North, C is in Carolina, dot com, and you can give, and the Lord will bless you. Or you can give through our Cash App, which is simply dollar sign the number one refuge, dollar sign the number one refuge. I pray this message has blessed you today. I pray that you're encouraged to know that we are walking in our sufficiency 
in God. And most of all, thank you so much for joining us each day. We know you don't have to do it, but we appreciate that you do. And we are thankful to God. This has become a wonderful, wonderful fellowship of people all over the world, all across the spectrum, just simply taking a little time to hear the word and to pray together. And I appreciate it so very much. And thank you for joining us each day. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Know that you are God sufficient. All right. Know that you are God sufficient until tomorrow morning at 630. This is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom.